Yeah. From US to Canada, Germany, Japan, there is less complaining than in Singapore and Ireland. Millions of people from all over the globe just caught this fever for complaint free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more. Good morning, everybody. It is so great to be here with you on this beautiful Monday morning. And although I am here with you live, I am not technically live with you because I'm recording this video early. As those of you who know, I am actually taking a vacation. I have not had one in years. And so I'm going to take a little bit of time off. And while I do that, I'm going to uh, re pre record these videos so that I can run them for you. And the good news about that is that because I am pre-recording these, I would like to ask you as always, and I'm going to have Teddy with me in just a second, be sure and welcome everybody who is here for the first time. If you're here for the first time, be sure and say, first timer, hi, I'm here for the very first time. Let us know that you're here for the first time. And everybody else, be sure and check in. Tell us where you are. And... Uh, Tell us what the weather is. Tell you. Tell us what you're up to. Just say hi. Everybody be sure and say hi. Remember, this is our positive online community. We are here to give you hope and inspiration every single day with these jump starts. And the way that happens is people like you like our page. When you find Will Bowen, facebook.com forward slash Will Bowen, be sure and like it. Just click like. And then you'll get event reminders about these daily jump starts and other things that we're up to. And also, thank you to those of you who share every single day these jump starts. That's how we build this community. I didn't mean to hit that button, but that's okay. We're going to leave that in there. So, once again, thank you very much to all of you and those of you who are here, especially for the very first time. And the interesting thing is, because I'm going to record several of these at a time, that means poor little Teddy is sitting in his bed and I'm going to pull him out <laughs> a few times here. But here we go. This is the very first one. Let's see if I can get him. He hasn't eaten today. Everybody tell Teddy to eat. Okay? Come here, bud. Come here. Oh, there's your emotional support vest. I was looking for that. Teddy now has an emotional support vest, so it makes it easier for him to fly on the airlines. Come on, bud. Ah, there we go. Hey, whoops. Hi. Hi. Here's Mr. Teddy Bear. There he is. There he is. 10.1 pounds of cuteness. 10.1 pounds. That's all he weighs. We just went outside and went for a walk and he met this little chunky dog and the woman was telling me that her dog won't stop eating. And I said, well, my dog sometimes won't start. And today he has not eaten at all. He had three good meals yesterday, but nothing today, right? Okay, are you up with doing this with me a whole bunch? You are, okay. Why don't you go and get back under your bed, okay, for now? Can I put you down? There he goes. All right, everybody, be sure and check in. Say hello to one another as you always do. I want to thank Mirosloff, my producer, for scheduling these and for sitting there making sure everything is good. And for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, thank you. You have found a positive community, a way to jumpstart your day every single day, and people who are interested and care about you and what's going on for you. Today, what I would like to do is a little atypical for me, and I want to go back and I want to revisit a Facebook Live that I did uh, several years ago. It was the day after the 2016 election, uh, November 19th. I remember going to bed the night before just kind of in shock. I think we all did. And that is true on all sides, I want to say, that uh, the polls just simply said this was going to be a cakewalk for Hillary Rodham Clinton. And she even scheduled her acceptance party, her big party in uh, the Javits Center in New York City. Now, I've been to the Javits Center several times for Book Expo. And one of the cool things about the Javits Center is it's enormous 
things, and it has a glass ceiling. And Ms. Clinton was wanting to make the point that she was breaking the glass ceiling, which, of course, did not happen. Now, I went to bed having read that information, got up the next morning, of course, like you and everybody else, checked to see who the new president was and what I saw. I was amazed by the remonstrations of the people who were friends and family of mine over the fact um, that Hillary Clinton had lost and Donald Trump had won. I'm not going to get into politics, by the way. Don't want to. That's. Um, they say that one of the important things about podcasters is that you have an opinion. I have an opinion. It's really strong. However, I want to attract people who want to give up complaining and who want to enjoy hope and inspiration in their lives, not just people who agree with me politically. And that's what tends to happen. So, Anyway, I got up the next morning and I was reading all these comments from all of these people about how upset they were and how uncomfortable they were. And so I decided to do a live video. That was new for me at that point. I wasn't doing a lot of live videos, but I decided that I was going to do one. So I clicked the buttons to go live, etc., just like I needed to do. And then while I was uh, on live, I uh, told a joke. And I've said many, 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 many times, this is my favorite joke. And it is. So much so that the people at the church, when I was a minister there, would go, oh, he's going to tell the joke again. So it's very short. Two old men are arguing about the Bible while they're sitting on a park bench. The first old man looks at the second and says, I'll bet you haven't even read the Bible. The second one said, well, I've read the book of Revelation. And the first one said, oh, yeah, what'd you get out of that? And the first one said, God wins. God wins. Hmm. Which God? That's the question, isn't it? I forget who the comedian was, but he uh, made a joke about the fact that if you read the Old Testament, uh, the Bible talks about a God who is angry and killing people with plagues, etc., etc. But in the New Testament, God's forgiving and loving, etc. And he said, nothing like having a kid to make you become a nicer person. <laughs> Probably the most impactful book that I've read in the last five years was The Better, Better Angels of Our Nature. I highly recommend this book to you. Now, I highly recommend that you download the audiobook. Unless you're a voracious reader with a lot of time on your hand, the audiobook is 30 hours long. But I can tell you the premise in about 30 seconds. The premise is that human beings as a primate species are moving towards being happier, healthier, more enlightened, and treating everybody better. Now, why don't you know that? Why didn't I know that? Well, because the news, there's no news in that. People are getting nicer and happier. Film at 11. Oh, good to know. I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. I don't need to know that. Now, before you write this off, the reason this book is 30 hours in audiobook form is it takes 30 hours to explain that in such scientific detail to give you all kinds of hope and inspiration and to realize that contrary to what we hear because bad news sells, human beings are actually evolving towards being nicer, sweeter, better, healthier, happier than they've ever been before. Now, Sometimes it doesn't look like it. And one of the things that we know about the evolution of human history is that it has never been a straight line. It has always been up and down. It has always been sometimes we will do some of the most magnanimous things in our human nature and then we will do some of the most horrific. In fact, one of the things that I, I read about a psychological study that found that if someone does something nice, they are less likely to do it again. Here's what I mean. If someone gives $10 to a homeless person on the street, all right, three blocks later, if they meet another homeless person, they are less likely to give money to that homeless person 
than had they not given it to the first person. It, it seems self-evident and obvious, but it is, it's, um, it's like a vaccination. We feel like we've done our good. When we think about the idea that God wins, you know, I want to remind you of, and I'm almost positive I should have looked it up, but I think it was Mother Teresa said that God has no hands but yours. So if you have a vision for the way the world should look, if you see the world as healthier, happier, and people uh, participating, and people receiving the health care, and the love and the support they need, if people deserve to be treated for mental illness rather than incarcerated, uh, or if you believe that people deserve to be incarcerated, whatever you choose to believe, God has no hands in this world but yours. And for God's vision, if you believe it's your vision as well, to be made manifest, it takes your hands. I'll leave you with the old story that many, many, many people have heard, and I'm sure you probably have, so indulge me. The story goes that there was a wise Buddhist monk. Two young boys were seeking to torment the monk. So what they did was they caught a small bird, and one of them walked up and held the small bird in his hands like this. And the other boy said to the monk, is the boy in his hand, is, excuse me, is the bird in my friend's hands alive or is it dead? Now the monk knew that if he said the bird was alive, the boy would crush the bird and he would prove him wrong. If he said that the bird was dead, the boy would simply open his hands and the bird would fly away, proving him wrong. So instead, the monk said a great truth that we all need to hear and we all need to remember. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. The future of your city, the future of your schools, the future of the country, and I know that can all seem enormous, but there's an old German phrase, many hands make light the work. Many hands make light the work. When we all lift our part, then God wins. So listen, I'm going to hang out here just a minute because I know that there are a lot of you here with me live this morning, and I know that you're going to want to share and make comments and make statements. I also want to say thank you again to those of you who are here for the very first time. If you're here for as a first-timer, be sure and identify yourself and like my page here on Facebook. That way you'll be notified as I go live every single day, Monday through Friday. And be sure and share today's jumpstart. Share today's jumpstart. If you know people who need to remember this message of God wins, in other words, in some ways we need to participate and in the other ways we need to let go and know that everything's going to work out. But it's a delicate balance and it's a daily balance to figure out which is which. Thank you all for joining me today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Tomorrow being Tuesday. And tomorrow, oh, we are going to, let's see if I can pull it up quickly enough to tell you. Oh, we're going to jumpstart MacGuffins. Do you know what a MacGuffin is? Alfred Hitchcock sure did. He talked about it quite a bit. We're going to talk about it tomorrow and how it reflects on you and your life and how you can apply them to your life. Enjoy today. We'll talk tomorrow. And I will see you then. Bye bye. No more, no more complaining. People, their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more.